Mavis Beacon teaches typing. There's Mavis herself and all her her fake glory. That's a that's clearly a real human person. That is clearly a real human on that photograph there. But since Mavis Beacon doesn't exist, that is not Mavis Beacon. She's an actress. They just got a person to pretend to be this completely cut out of whole cloth imaginary figure, Mavis Beacon, and slap her non-existent fictional name on the front as well as her non-existent fictional face. Over five million sold. I'll bet that means that they've sold over five million of all of the, the eight different versions of this program that have been made up to this point over the course of about eight years. That's probably what it means. I doubt they sold five billion. If these people were willing to, if these people were willing to, to create a fictional human being, to create a fictional typing tutor and present everything as though she was a real person that really existed and created this game and endorsed it, if they were, if they were willing to pull that enormous deception over the public's eyes, I don't think they would stop short of pulling out sleazy corporate tricks like that. Type better, work faster. Welcome, I'm your teacher, Mavis Beacon, and I'm here to teach you the important skill of typing. Whether you're learning to type or you want to improve, my typing program is the time-tested learning system that stands above the rest. I've spent, I've spent ten years perfecting this easy, fun method that can... I've spent ten years perfecting this easy, fun method that's consistently ranked number one in the world. It's the proven, effective way to learn and master keyboard skills. From the very first time you enter my classroom, I assess your ability, place you in the right lessons, and monitor your progress, just like a good teacher should. I'll tell you what else a good teacher should exist. And I give you helpful encouragement and spoken feedback every step of the way. Just ask one of my five million alumni. I'm, I'm actually glad Mavis Beacon doesn't exist because I feel I want to strangle her just from reading that there. I want to strangle her non-existent neck. Priority how It's got one of those weird, like, squint keyboards and the cover... The cover of the CD has that weird curved keyboard that it had in the game. I swear I've never seen these things in my life. Maybe, you know what, and it's the picture in the screenshot of the game. Maybe Mavis Beacon, maybe the Mavis Beacon Corporation invented that stupid curved keyboard. That's probably a reasonable chance of that. That would explain why they've got this thing all over the images. Although, it's, because it's just got, it seems to have just been leaked in recent years that Mavis Beacon was a giant hoax. She was just a scam. Because, I mean, look at this, all these quotation marks. Hi, I'm Mavis Beacon, I've been doing this for ten years. They really, it's not just a misconception. They clearly wanted you to believe she was real and she existed. Which she doesn't. But the hint was staring us in the face all these years, because if you look closely at the rights text at the bottom, it says that Mavis Beacon teaches typing, Mavis Beacon and Mindscape are registered trademarks. So Mavis Beacon herself is a registered trademark. That was, that was about the only clue that there was something not... The price wasn't quite right with Mavis Beacon. These guys unfortunately got away with this lie for over 20 years until it finally got exposed on the internet, but nobody cares anymore anyway. I mean, nobody ever, ever actually cared in the first place, but I, I certainly assumed Mavis Beacon was a real person when I got this, wouldn't you? But this is not. Okay. Mavis Beacon is not over. I tracked down my old Mavis Beacon 8, version 8 CD from 1999, I think. Found that and got it working. There's Mavis. Finally, the woman actually shows her non-existent face for once in her own game named after her. Let's start Mavis Beacon Teacher's Typing 8. Let's see what, what marvellous innovations could have taken place between 1987 and 1999. Let's just see how much better the 8th game in this, this massive, needlessly long-running series has of games that all just teach you how to type. Why are there so many? Why are they still making them? To the Mavis Beacon Typing Institute. Just type your name in the username box or select your name from the list below and we can get started. Anything you say, uh, Mrs. Ba Bacon Teaches Baking. Right. Welcome to typing class. 
I'm your teacher, Mavis Beacon. Hello, Mavis. Click the computer in the center of your screen to start your lesson. Click on the door to your right to go to the game hallway. Click on the door to your left to go to the media center. Fun stuff. For other options, select from the menu bar. For you can hear the 90s graininess in the recording of her voice. But you can also see the 90s right in front of your eyes here. But just look at this glorious CGI computer generated effects. Look at that. Look at the. I remember that swervy keyboard as well. Look at that thing. That was real. That curved keyboard thing. Well, I never saw one as extreme as that, actually, but I do remember that. I do remember the, the swerving wave thing at the bottom of the keyboard. I don't remember the keys themselves curving along like that. Let's shut up, Mavis. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of Mavis Beacon. Yes, this is what I was hoping to find in the first game. The typing test. Yeah, let's give that a whash. Mavis was nowhere to be seen in the original game, but she's all over this one. She just can't stop putting her fictional face in your face. And I'm not going to stop talking about how she's how she doesn't exist because this series this this series is really quite weird. The more you think about it, they make a game like every year for this to this very day, I believe. Mavis Beacon teaches typing just keeps getting updated. Like, why do they have to make so many versions of a typing tutor? Uh. Start lessons, take your diagnostic quiz. Yeah, but she's going to find out just how much I've, how, have I got what it takes to type. Let's get this keyboard out. Here we go. Move his back and close his tweeting. Uh, what on earth? It's, oh, for goodness sake. What? I'm pressing the backspace button, but nothing's happening. Oh, it won't even let me, will it? All right, fine. Have it your way, Mavis. Great, so you can't correct your mistakes in this. It's one of those games. If you make a mistake, you've got to just keep going. Which, like, if you're like me, just makes it even harder to carry on. Anybody else feel that with these typing tutors? When you couldn't correct your mistakes, it just... You just ended up stuck for half a second trying to figure out what you're doing anymore. I don't feel right if I can't correct them, but oh well. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Brother, I, was, I thought I was going to make myself look really good. But it slowed down there. I thought I was going to show up Mavis speaking. I thought she was going to say, Wow, you're the best typer in the universe, Mr. X. But actually, I'm making myself look like a plonker now. Oh, where did that... Where did the hash symbol come from? I'm going to do this again. I'm not letting Mavis speaking make me look incompetent. If she comes on and says, Oh, you need a lot of improvement, kid. Since you've been placed in the advanced level, we'll focus on improving your skills. The advanced level. You've made it all the way to the advanced level. Oh, I think that test just decided which one of the three levels you go to. Practice the key <laughs> You're really showing improvement since you started now. Let's take a fun break. The 500 most... We're going to be typing the 500 most mistyped words. In this, that'll be interesting. The You're 500 most mistyped words in the English language. Well, let's see how I rise up against that, Mavis speaking. Then, let's do more to help wait, am I missing? Oh wait, oh, I'm a plonker. I'm pressing the next button makes me just go on to the next lesson. Oh no, that means that I'm no. Oh no, I, I wanted to see the 500 most mistyped words thing. I'm sure you'll like playing a game for a change of pace. Can we get that again? Remember, remember uh, touch preg wiggles uh, symbol typing chart. I want to find there it is. That's it. Let's do it. Five hundred most mistyped words. The uh, is she serious? These? Well, I mistyped that one. Are these words really the most? Mistyped words? Oh, well, that was that. So both is a really, really mistyped word. I think that Mavis was telling Porky Pies. I think you were being a blanana slammer, Mavis. <laughs> I surpassed my goal speed by almost twice the goal speed. Make sure you're comfortable. I'm coming along very well, thank you, Mavis speaking. But, let's have some practice. Let's not have some practice, I think, Mavis. Uh, how do I escape this, Mavis? I want out, Mavis. Mavis! Mavis! Miss! Miss! I need an adult! 
Oh, for goodness sake. Are you sure you want to leave? No, you plug. I just want to quit the lesson. She's not going to let me quit this stupid lesson. I was clicking all of the, the options at the bottom, but none of them work. Also, it lets me backspace on these. Huh? What now? Oh. My eyes are playing tricks on me here. It's this virtual machine that I'm using. It's rather small. Now, nah, coupled with my short sight of this, which is something that I have, is making me a happy camper. I mean, my eyes are not happy campers. Complacence equilibrium. I didn't see equilibrium in the 500 most mistyped words. Next slide. Let's just keep. Let's just. Let's just complete the entire game. Why don't we? Let's forward, 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 forward. That is what this does, right? Right. Well, actually, let's let's see what this game's most famous for. Let's have a look at some of the, the games. That's what Mavis Beacon is known for. Not Road Race. I know Road Race was not the. Oh, the piano game. What? Piano game. No. No. Piano. Oh wait, shark attack, fine. Let's have some look at 1999 Mavis Beacon shark attack. These games were one of the big exciting things about Mavis Beacon back in the day. That was what they advertised so much. Gunny sack. You see some weird words. Concrescence. You see weird words in these typing things. I still don't know what those meant. That's how you spell dumbfound, is it? Cumul cumuli. Laundry man. Okay, now these, I would say, are more in like <laughs> the 500 most mistyped words. Simply because most people probably don't know what they mean, including me. Look at that fluorescence, what a ghastly word that is. Somebody should be shot for inventing that word. Yo, oh, I found the. Argh! I found the hidden treasure! Ha <laughs> ha! Just take a deep breath. Captain Mavis! If your eyes I found the treasure! The Good job. Come up and bring the treasure up here and we'll measure your typing skills. Only joking. I'm going to toss you overboard. Ha ha! I've used you fools! And now I'm taking over this ship! Well, Mavis Beacon was a monster a uh, all along. Job. Now where do I Good. get out of here? Oh, the internet. Let's go to the internet. This will be fun. Click here to go to the Mavis Beacon Teacher's Typing homepage. Okay. Let's see what happens. Cannot be displayed. What a massive surprise. Let's go to something else instead then. With games! Welcome to the game here we are. Here you can practice different skills. Practice your typing this is what I'm talking about. Games. Yeah, I was saying earlier though. All of these games were the big exciting thing. You're supposed to do this in the time to that metronome, but I'm too old. I was, uh, I'm, these games were big and exciting, but I mean, they're all just typing a bunch of words. There's nothing, there's nothing in this. There is nothing here. Absolutely nothing. Oh, shut up, Mavis. I, I was too fast and slow. Space junk. I think I remember this being the best one. And it's just still exactly the same as all the rest of them. Oh, oh, thank goodness. I thought I had to type every single one of those words to make that meteor explode. <laughs> wow, he's got the skills. He fired that thing before the planet even showed up. Oh no, I'm gonna die. I actually died. What on earth does tie it mean? Oh brother, I'm at, here's me getting cocky. But I'm actually losing it now. He's firing the things in the wrong direction. Well, that's because they don't appear until it's too late. Yeah, see, like that. There, that's how to do it. Wait until they appear. But I'm not going to do that. Was I saying this was the most fun one? Shooting all the bad 90s CGI graphics like that banana there. <laughs> space banana. It's the, it's the banana space aliens! Oh, come on. I hit him. How many lives have I got? 
Can I put in the Konami code? Like in uh, Gradius? Does this end? Is this like uh, Star Evil from Action 52 or something? Is it just no way? Oh, if it was like Star Evil from Action 52, then I would have just smashed into that banana immediately when the game began. No me. Yeah, what was so exciting about these stupid games? They're just all the same. It's just doing the exact same activity, but with different graphics in the background. Did this really impress anybody? Even then? When does this end? Oh, that, then. It ended, okay. That was a long one. Oh, look, there's the health in the bottom right. Good job, you beat your goals. This is, I wonder if Mavis Speaking itself ever ends. Is there an end to this game? Uh, road race, we've done that. Checkout time. Oh, I remember this one. How does this work again? Oh, it's number typing. Well, you know, I was asking did people enjoy this, but I think I remember enjoying this. I had a weird thing for educational games. I used to enjoy these educational games. I enjoyed playing these educational games, and I enjoyed learning things when I was playing the educational games. I used to think, I wish that school was like this. I hated school, as a lot of you know. But I really did enjoy... Oh, <laughs> I can't go back. Well, somebody's not getting the, the cheese puffs or whatever that was today. Sorry, Mrs. Blankensop. Your kids are not going to have the yummy treats tonight. Because I... <laughs> Because I typed the wrong number on my cash machine here, and the, the cash machine won't let me take it back. I just got to throw it out. But I hated school. But um, I remember thinking, if, if like if education was done with educational games like this, and you could do it at your own pace, in your own time, without teachers, uh, you know, leering over your shoulder and making you confiscating your Pokemon trading card games and things that you that you naturally can't be allowed to play in your own free time at break time. Why would they let you do that? Uh, you know. If you weren't in a controlled classroom environment and forced to do these things with a teacher standing over you, judging you, uh, if you could just do this, I would have, like, finished my entire school career in probably, like, five months. I would have just blown through everything on these CDs and learned all of it. So yeah, I did enjoy stuff like this. I I'm just think I remember sitting here doing this and thinking, hey, I'm enjoying typing these numbers and watching the fun, watching the, uh, again, the bad 90s CGI effects. Scrolling along. What now? Mavis? I think that I might have broken Mavis. I'm sorry, Mavis. What have I done to you, poor woman? As if she hasn't get, as if she doesn't have enough stress, having to not exist. I'm just making her life even harder, Mavis. Hello, Mavis. Please respond, Mavis. 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 What? Yeah. Maybe I just. Maybe I just bought too much stuff that blew the cash register. It's not capable of deleting the wrong numbers if I put them in, so maybe the machine just blows up if you buy too much food. Well, in these tough economic times, you've got to stop people buying too much, you know? Just like the World War II with the rationing. If you didn't know about that, kids, in Britain at least, during World War II, families in Britain only were allowed to buy a certain amount of stuff each week or month or something. It's called rationing. They were very pleasant times. Let's see, Mavis Beacon. There we go, that's Mavis Beacon is dead. She was never alive, of course. Because she doesn't exist. Welcome to the Mavis Beacon. Right, let's get back in there. Welcome back to typing class. Uh, over Welcome okay, so let's just stay away program. from the cash register. I remember this one too, the gecko. Which once again is just exactly the same as every other one. Except that you gotta, if you're as fast of a typer as me, you gotta wait for the animation to catch up before you can get on to the next thing. It's economic sum. 
Huh? Oh, I think I typed it too fast for it to know I typed it. Uh, it's just throwing me for a loop now. Yeah, I think I'm going too fast. Oh no, maybe not. I typed all that in one go and it kind of it picked up. Yeah, the gecko's happy. I didn't reach the words per minute goal. I don't think it was physically possible to, but let's move on to the final thing. Penguin the penguins. Crossing. Cut the words on the penguin crossing. As they flow downstream. Thanks for the instructions, Beavis. Here we go. Oh, it's like Frogger. You've got to save the penguin from crashing onto the rocks on the right on the left. You could do it, penguin. Uh, English? Oh, I couldn't tell what that said. What it said as. Feet. Just like Happy Feet, the penguin movie. The Happy Feet series. Again, I thought that said stale. This, the, the janky 90s uh, ratchet animation and those those uh, glaciers is just throwing me. Whoa! <laughs> They're all having a laugh. Excellent. That's the games. <laughs> Blown through all of them in about 10 minutes. Wouldn't it have been worth the £50 I must have paid for this back in 99? Actually, I got this for a birthday. <coughs> Pardon me. I got this for a birthday gift, I think. Yeah, I did. I remember that. Birthday present. Now, where are we? Welcome, Sarah Ferguson. You're typing at the advanced level of that right, uh, media centre. What's here? Welcome to the. Uh, you were saying, Mavis? Let's get to repeat that. Alright, oh, so it's just once and you're done, it seems. She'll never tell me what this place is again. This is it. Where are we? Look at the. I thought we looked like we were in some normal library, but look at the background. There's like a beach or something. Is it actually. Actually, it doesn't look like a beach at all, doesn't it? I looked out there and thought I looked at that and thought it seemed like the Bahamas, but it actually doesn't. Oh, that's just the website one again. Select a lesson to modify from the list below, or make your own new lesson using the create button. These are the road race will help you with your speed. No, I don't want to play the road race again, but I, yeah, end game. Uh, escape again? Does escape? No, escape didn't get me out. What's this computer? Select a title from one of the categories below to begin your typing, or import and practice with your favorite text. Uh, let's have a look at some job search. What on earth does that mean? CVs, how to have a... <laughs> I think I'll run a million miles from all that, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> everything about that page disgusts me. Historical documents? What's here? The English Bill of Rights. Whoa. Oh, this is all English stuff. They've, they've, they've adapted this for the country. Just like the Mario Teachers typing game did too. The American one will be... Uh, the American one will be American. The information and advice presented in these videos is not intended as a substitute for medical counselling. What on earth? What? What? Not all exercises are suitable for everyone. If you feel pain or discomfort, the creators of this program have no responsibility for you blowing your head off. No, no, no responsibility for you breaking your shoulders with these. Your body, okay. All right, it's about good posture. Look, look at all this. Do you think they teach this to the kids now? Do you think that they have classes in school where they go through all of this stuff, sidewinder? Eye rests, wrist bends. They might actually might. Maybe I'm. La I was laughing. That was a joke. But maybe they actually do that now. I'm sure the kids pay as much attention to it as their forefathers did. I'm sure the. I'm sure the kids pay as much attention to that stuff as their parents did when they were learning how to use computers. Oh my! Learning to type or brushing up on your typing speed. Oh, Mavis Beacon cool. teaches typing. Wants you to develop your skills in the healthiest, most comfortable way possible. <laughs> This video module contains information on this. cumulative trauma disorders and office ergonomics, two of today's most highly profiled health topics. We hope you find this information useful. Because new discoveries and treatments are constantly unfolding, 
we encourage you to learn more about these topics through your local library, the internet, and your healthcare professional. As the name implies, cumulative trauma disorders usually occur as a result of activities that accumulate damage to the body. These activities typically involve some sort of motion or angle that's stressful, such as continually repeating a particular movement or holding your body at an unnatural position for long periods. I didn't know there was a series of videos about correct typing posture in this. They really felt this was an important thing. Maybe it's just me, but I, nobody cares about this stuff now, do they? I've never heard of anybody talking about type, good typing posture good typing techniques and typing exercises and eye rests and side winders. I think this is stuff that died at some point since since this game was made here. Since the 20 years, in the, in the 20 years since this was made, I think this stuff has, has uh, given up the ghost. Am I right? Am I correct? I'll find out if I look it up, I suppose. If I look up typing. Oh, crumbs, this is boring, actually. I thought, this would maybe, I thought this might be fun, but it's one of the boring ones. Just this man in his suit and tie is going to be talking at us about, about, about dangers to your body getting stressed by typing too much, by pushing buttons on keyboards for too long. Such as continually repeating a particular movement. Uh, healthy workspace. Office ergonomics. Defining neutral. Breaks. Exercise. Shoulder rolls. Windmills. I'm guessing that's if you. T I'm guessing that's taking your arms above your head and and circling them way to the sides and down and then way to the other sides, like crossing over in front of your body and then back up again. I'm doing it right now. You can't see, but that. So that head rotation, sky breach, the head rotation. How that is that the one where you got to like swivel, like roll your head around 360 degrees? Because apparently they found out that kills you at some point. That's they don't do that now. The neck, the neck rolling thing. That's bad. It seems. They've been saying that for about 20 years. I remember in primary school once a gym teacher started doing that, but then they said, "Oh wait, no, that's bad now. Better not do it." That's pretty much how they said it. There <laughs> was that, there was that, like, off the hand. Oh, no, it's bad, don't do it. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing here, I don't want this. Is there anything, uh... Nothing fun in the background to click? These 90s games like this are just usually packed with stuff to click in the background, but this is a boring adult game, of course. This isn't for children. There's nothing interesting. Oh, well. Let's go back to the... this computer, then. Let's have a look for folklore. A Tale of Eggs, The Goddess in the Moon, Why the God Left Earth, Kelpie, Glooscap Fights a Monster by Passab Aquade, we've got to do that one. <laughs> what the earth is this? Glooscap Fights a Monster, pa oh brother, could you have a worse name to spell mate? Okay now for the, that's the enter button, if you didn't know this kids, that, that weird little symbol is enter. It's called a carriage return. And it never, that symbol never appears anymore, but it means press the enter button. So, Glooscap was the greatest hunter and medicine man that ever lived. He made all the an he made all the animals in the world. Yep, good for him. Fashioning them to be peaceful and useful to man. Peaceful? And something went wrong at some point in Glooscap. He made, when he first made Squirrel, he was a he was a big as a whale. Where's the Mavis Beacon proof readers when you need them? What will you do if you live in the world? Glue Scap asked the squirrel. Squirrel? Not the squirrel, just squirrel. He went to a tree and chewed... Well, I don't know if he's a boy. It didn't mention the squirrel's gender. Wait, no, it does up there. He was as big as a whale. Squirrel went to a tree and chewed it quickly. Quickly, does Glooscap not know the, the traits of the creatures he creates? He to his sharp teeth. You are too destructive to be this big, said Glooscap. And he reformed Squirrel with his hands until Squirrel 
was his present size that we know him for today. Then Glooscap made beaver, and he also was the size of a whale. What will you do if you live in the world? He asked him. Beaver immediately built an enormous dam that flooded the country from horizon to horizon. Oh dear. You will drown everyone if I if I leave you this big, said Glooscap. And he reformed Beaver down to his present size. Then Glooscap made Moose, and he was so tall, so tall, his horns scraped the sky. Moose trampled everything. Forests, mountains, everything. Oh no, said Glooscap. You will step on everything. Oh no, get back and kill it. So he tried to shrink Moose, but Moose resisted. Finally, Glooscap succeeded. But, <laughs> but because of their fight, Moose's body was strangely formed with a hump and big horns, and a short neck, a short stumpy funnel, and a short stumpy boiler. Glooscap then created people, and he taught them the, the everything, everything, everything they needed to know. How to hunt and fish, how to take care of their children, how to respect their elders. Everyone was happy. And everybody, every single person was happy in the village for a while. In the village. So Glooscap created all of the animals in the world, but he just lives in a village somewhere. It's a very... I'm guessing this is, uh... This is the... I'm guessing this is the belief of how the world was created in a religion somewhere. It's an oddly, uh... What would you say? It's an oddly... Um... It's a strangely uh, low-key, I guess. Some guy in some village somewhere created everything, is what they're saying. It's really quite humble of a... I don't know, you know? It's got a pretty crazy name, though. Or did, did Mavis Beacon just make this up? Maybe this, is, maybe, maybe this is what Mavis Beacon herself believes. That would explain a lot. It really would. At last he came to a strange village. The people there had webbed feet and hands and big eyes. The water in their part of the stream was yellow and slimy and smelled bad. Even so, the man asked for a drink after his long journey. Which man is this? Is it Glooscap? You have to ask your chief! They told him. Only he can give you water. Uh, my hands are getting tired from this now. I think I'm needing those posture exercises that that the uh, farther up the stream. I think I'm needing those posture exercises that that man in a tie was trying to warn me about. He was right. The, the 90s were right. I needed that stuff. I need the the sidewinders. <laughs> what? I've heard the word sidewinder. Isn't that a baseball thing? Unfortunately, I'm not American. I don't know what that means. Sidewinder. I guess it must mean uh, throwing stuff, you know. Doing something with your arm, your throwing arm. Anyway, the bloated boy, Lily. What happened? I've been not paying attention. There's a huge monster in the water. He's got a bunch of facial features. The little monster... The big monster said, What do you want, little man? The monster... In a horrible, croaking voice. Did Glooscap create this monster? Because he created everything else. Man was scared, but nevertheless, he said stuff. My people need water. Ah, this man's on an epic quest to get some water for his people. But this stupid twerp monster is hoarding all of the water in the lake. That's not fair. Everybody else needs water too. Plus, he's turning the water muddy, just like in Lagoon. Of the Super Nintendo. All the water is being made muddy by demons. The water is being. All the water in the village has become muddy, and so therefore, 
according to the village elder. It must be demons doing this, so you'd better go and destroy them all. That's the only possible explanation <laughs> for the water turning muddy. That's actually how it starts. Talk about leaping to conclusions there. I mean, there was a while, some time ago, in the place I live, the water went weird for a little while. Just, just one, like for a few hours, the water became tainted. And the government, obviously, the council got a lot of calls about it. And they worked on it soon to fix it. But I don't think that when the government got these calls in, I doubt that they... I doubt they entertained that notion. What is Glooscap doing? I want to get to the end of this, but I'm really starting to wonder where the end of it is. I mean, well, Glooscap is, Glooscap is fighting this water monster to stop the earth being muddy. What's the deal with Glooscap? He's like a god, but they've never said at any point that he was. He's just some some guy that lives in a village. Okay, he cut the monster's belly open. It's pretty graphic. I think there needs to be a video game adaptation of the adventures of Glue Scap. I think I'd buy that. It would certainly be long, going by this. The he grabbed. Brother, they didn't proofread this, although I can't really blame them because this is really long. Considering how long this lasts, I'm not... I'm not going to scold them for getting a word wrong. 50,000 words into this. Oh, I think it's over. I think I'm just being uh, wishful thinking. Oh no. Phew. Well, I didn't expect that to turn quite so... um... long, but... that was glue scap. What the... I'm honestly curious enough to look that up, because that was quite interesting. It looked like it was going to explain where every single animal came from. Uh, why that? I want to see that one. That sounds good. There's, there's two spaces before the word Africa. I'm sure that's some uh, typographical convention. But as you know, the chameleon walks. I don't think I did know that, actually. It's interesting to see all the different... Uh, 
beliefs about things that this that Mavis Beacon teaches typing is collected together for some reason. And these mammoth typing things. If you want to see all those, then then uh, uh, I can I can type them all up in a separate video or something. I think that will I think for the sake of you know of uh, not taking up too much of our time, let's leave that be for now. We've got in fiction Aladdin, red badge of courage. I recognise most of these names, but not Red Badge of Courage, or The Call of the Wild. The cold passed reluctantly from the earth and the retiring fogs revealed the stretch out hills and the landscape changed them from something to something and stuff this. It'll be some war story. English. What on earth? Oh dear, I don't think so. Quagmire, no. Let's get out of there. I bore it, Mavis. Astronomy. Uh, how long does what? How long does it take? How long does what take? I need some context here, Mavis. You're killing me, Mavis. Not enough details. That's your problem. You're full of missing details. You just don't get the details, like like the details of existing. You need to exist in order to exist, Mavis. Something that you don't do. You need to learn these things. Number practice. No. I don't know what's changed since 1999, but I remember as a child spending quite a lot of time with this thing and having a nice pleasant time looking at all these things and enjoying myself for hours, but now I've blown through this in the matter of half an hour and like, I'm never going to touch this again after I'm f finished with this list of stuff here. What's the tests? Advanced speed test. Oh, planning for retirement. This will be good. I think we'll actually do this one. Planning for retirement. Retirement? Retirement? My prime! Planning for retirement. Now is no time to think of what you do not have. Think of what you can do with what there is. This quote from Ernest Hemingway. May be relevant as you eh, relevant as you analyze what you need for a successful retirement. This will be fun. This will be an interesting subject for everybody watching this. Of primary importance to everyone. But yeah, everybody watching this actually is probably nostalgic for this. They probably had it 20 years ago. So yeah, you're you're all of the age that you should be getting ready to retire now. You're all at least in your 20s. You're really going to have to start retiring shortly. What? You, do you need 10 million or 800,000? Those are both large amounts of money. You probably don't need any of it. Just live off of benefits for your retirement. The government won't let you die. Just eat apples and stuff. Just find a way to enjoy stuff without caring about food. Like, find a way to not get in your enjoyment out of expensive food and drink and other expensive things. Find a way to be really happy with stuff that doesn't cost a penny and you'll be set for life you'll beat the system that's the secret they don't want you to know that kids if you can just be happy with stuff that doesn't cost money then like you'll still feel happiness the emotion of happiness is every bit as much for somebody that like the emotion of happiness is the same emotion no matter what stuff no matter how expensive the thing is that you're getting it from you can be perfectly if happiness is your goal in life which it might not be but if it is, then you can find, you can train yourself to be happy with, like, watching paint dry. It sounds horrible, but you could do it. And then you'd realise how daft you were for pursuing all that stuff that cost money when you could have just not needed it instead. Anyway, pension plan. You can just, I'll be going to prison for saying that. You're not supposed to find that out until you're too old to do anything about it. Until you've already spent your entire life slaving away for faceless corporations. So how can you person plan? Uh, how can I person plan? You just you can just do a best guess. Take the projected income from Social Security right to the Social Security Administration to find out. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna bother doing that. Honestly, what does that even mean? 
and write to the Social Security Administration to find out what your projected income. Surely you can just do that on the internet nowadays. SS. I don't know what this means. I'm not planning my retirement very well, am I? Subtract your projected retirement expenses. Total income minus expenses. Of course, the reason why they have a, a pension planning uh, essay in Mavis Beacon is because Mavis Beacon, unlike most typing tutors that are aimed at children, like the SpongeBob SquarePants typing, or or the Timon and Pumbaa typing, which I had, or Need Mario teachers typing. Unlike all of them, Never Speaking really isn't designed for children. It has those games, but they're staid, lifeless, dull adult games. It's not going to scare them. So, I mean, children can play these, but they're not targeted for children. The idea is that anybody can play Mavis Teacher's Typing. Mavis herself is a very mundane looking woman. There's nothing exciting about her. She's just a woman with a, a, a professional looking dress on. So that's why this retirement article is here. Have you contributed to a SEP IRA? I don't know a clue what that is. America has all these things associated with retirement that we don't in America in Britain. 401ks. I still don't know what that means. Rollovers and SEP IRAs. We don't have any of this for over here. Oh, that's the American analyzed. I tripped that up there. I read somewhere actually that Britain also has a the history of having the, the the S has been Z's in Americanlish like that analysed. It's something that Britain did too before America. It's not a like, uniquely American thing. I guess America just liked it better and did it more. I guess. Actually, I don't know, but <laughs> I wouldn't say that. When I was younger, I assumed that people like at some point back then. America decided to take these words. They said, hey, let's take these words and let's spite Britain because we hate Britain so much now. Let's let's change the words to other words. Let's take let's change bin to trash can. Let's change pavement to sidewalk. Let's take the U out of colour. I thought that they were doing that just to be... Just to, you know, just to say in your face, Britain, we can do what we want with your precious English language. Uh, but... I mean, now I'm pretty confident that nothing like that happened. Language evolves naturally, so they say. A lot of research on that now. Languages naturally change over time. It's not something anybody chooses. To, they, don't, they don't like decide, let's make this a word. It just, people speak to each other and gradually they just sort of make up new words and replace them. It is, when you live in a different country from someone else, that's just going to happen. They're going to have separate evolutions of the language. It's natural. There's a lot of unknowns in retirement, and you've got to plan early. Burma? A Burmese pension? It might surprise you to learn about Burmese retirement. What is this going to say? 44 million people live in Burma. Uh, it didn't surprise me, but I had no idea how many people lived in Burma. But like, I'm not surprised. You probably know very little about the country. Well, you're right there, yeah. I'm, I'm curious how this is going to tie into retirement. It's almost as large as Texas. Burma is bounded. Tibet is in the north, that's where Tintin is, climbing the mountains to rescue Chan. Laos, that's where Hank Hill's father fought in some war, I think. And all these other places. All the places that's nearby. Okay, any time you start, any time you feel like relating this to retirement, maybe speaking, feel free. Country's heavily forested. They can uh, turn all the trees into retirement funds. Burma was formerly a British colony. What? Am I losing it here? What's going on? They've just stopped talking about retirement. I think the person that wrote this article for this game just <laughs> lost the plot at some point. I think they were, they were probably sitting there in the middle of this thinking, Ugh, nobody's going to type all of this. Nobody's going to type out the entire retirement article and maybe speaking teachers typing. I'll just shove in a bunch of stuff about Burma. Nobody will notice. But uh, but I noticed 20 years later. The whole internet is watching this. They're going to notice as well. The entire internet watches every one of my videos. 
YouTube's just uh, fiddling with the numbers to make it look like it's only 10 people, but it's really the entire internet. A lot of young people. There's a lot of young people in, in Burma, so what's it got to do with retirement? The life expectancy is less than 59 years. You're not even going to reach retirement age. Seriously, this couldn't be any less. Why did women live longer than men? This is a well-known thing. Women live longer. Has anybody figured out why? Is it just that they've got stronger bodies? Or is there some other weird thing going on? Are all the men getting shot to pieces in war? That can't be it, because women joined the army as well now. What's the, what's the deal with that? Why did women get a few more years than men? Why do left-handers die younger than right-handers? That's annoying me. That annoys me as well. I'm left-handed. I get a few less years on this earth than you plonkers. Well, maybe I'll escape that that statistics fact because uh, I don't drink alcohol, and it seems that one of the famous traits of left-handers is that they become alcoholics. Maybe that's why they all die younger. Then again, but then they also say that drinking alcohol lets you live longer. If you don't drink alcohol, you have an even shorter life. That's something I've read before as well. So, not only am I male, but I'm left-handed, and I don't drink. So that's about the worst possible combination of things for living a long life. I must have, I must have, I must have lost like 15 years off of my life expectancy just from those factors alone. The Burmese temples can be found in Buddhist temple. 89% of Burma is Buddhist. Well, that was the that was 1999. It's probably like one percent now. The rest of them are probably all uh, they probably all become what was that guy's name? Gobslap. <laughs> the the witch doctor. The Gobslap. The medicine. The medicine man. From that article earlier. They all believe in him now. What was his name? I meant to look that up. I've got. want to. I want to look that up on the internet and see what the deal is with that. Oh, stuff this. I'm fed up with this. In the Burma. Well, what was what was that thing called? We're coming to an end to this adventure, so let's look up folklore. Um, Glue Scap fights a monster. Let's look that up right now. The camera's in the middle of the computer screen, but let me see if I can use my my, uh, my computer skills to get that to s fixed. See if I can get that to show what I want. Glue scap. Watch, if this brings up Mavis Beacon teaches typing as the top result. No, I didn't search for Mori Building Digital Art Museum. I don't know what it thought I'd done there. Glue scap. Come on. Glue scap. Alright, he exists. At the very least, he's, he's, he didn't just make him up for Mavis Beacon. I don't have the knowledge to say whether he actually existed in real life, but he's not just Mavis's twisted imagination. Glue scap. Glue scap is a legendary figure of the Wabanaki peoples, native peoples located in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and Canada. Okay, that's Canadian then, so that, this is what Canadians believe. Stories were first recorded by them in the 19th... by who? Who was the first one? 1800s, Baptist clergyman. In his role as creator, Glooscap is similar to this. Man who came from nothing. Uh, Glooscap... Glooscap, kind benevolent, a warrior against evil, and the possessor of magic powers. So what exactly is he? He created humans from the dust from his body. His twin brother, Balsamus. It doesn't appear as though Glooscap created the universe in this, according to this story. He's just... He's just some per that's that that the Mavis Beacon thing said he was a person that lived in a village, and then he decided to create animals. In one version of the Mer apostrophe Kmak creation story, 
Glooscap lay on his back with arms outstretched and his head toward the rising sun for 365 days and nights. Then his grandmother was born as an old woman from the dew of the rock. Okay, mythology's weird. It's really weird. Then this per his nephew was born from the foam of the sea, and then his mother was born from the plants of the earth. So all of his mother, his mother and grandmother were born from him. His favourite island, Prince Edward Island. Alright, well, he saved the world from an evil frog monster. Yeah, well, we read about that, who had swallowed all of the earth's water. Yep, that was in Mavis's account. So she got the, the big points. He's a major figure. He's a Glooscap is a major figure of regional identity for the Bay of Fundy region. Regional identity. I'd never heard of this guy. Is he well known? Is he like a really famous person in America? Like everybody's heard of this guy. Oh, when they say native people, do they mean Native American? Is that what they're saying? They're just, they're, not, they're just avoiding saying that, are they? This is the sort of thing where political correctness can get in the way of, of clarity. I think that's what they're saying, native peoples of Vermont. Native Americans. But formerly, back in the old days, they were called Red Indians. But they don't call them that now. Because they're not Indian. And they're not really red either. But either way, that's, that's a racist term now, I believe. Not quite at the same level as the N-word, which you're not allowed to say unless you're black, apparently. Uh, at least in America, you wouldn't catch anybody, no, you wouldn't catch anyone saying it in Britain either. Now, so that's close cap, yeah. That was, well, that was Mavis Beacon. Um, I was having a ponder over this, actually, earlier. I said that I was having loads of fun with this as a child, but I didn't actually. I, I didn't have that much fun with it. I don't, I'm pretty sure that I played with it for a bit, but I I did, uh, it wore thin fairly quickly, I think. I don't believe I spent much time with this. I thought I'd enjoy it more than I did. Um, but I believe, what else have we got to do? Have a look at the options before we leave. Speed test. Roll your mouse to explore huh? your options and receive instructions. Oh, what? A file for speed tests. Do you use a standard or a Microsoft R, natural R keyboard? Microsoft have registered the trademark of the word natural, just like Freddy's, just like the Five Nights at, <laughs> just like the Nightmare on Elm Street NES game, Freddy, Freddy TM's coming, they've registered the word natural. I would like to know how this, how this trademark stuff works. How do you just go about registering words from the English language like that? Mavis Beacon teaches typing for Windows 95. This is running on a Windows XP virtual machine, 1997. I definitely got this in 1999, late 1999. Was this the most recent time. version then? The I'm sure there's more recent Mavis Beacon Teacher's typings. I was almost inclined to buy it so I can do a video on that, just to have a, a comparison of Mavis Beacon across the years. Maybe I should play every single version that's ever been made of this game. Maybe that would be a really bad idea. No, the help won't load. It can't... Executing this... Oh, no, it's not failed to load. It's just telling me it's executing win help rather than win hope because this help file uses a 16-bit DLL. Thanks for the information, Windows. It's opened up the, the Windows 95 help file. I recognise this kind of help document. They all looked like this back then. They weren't usually th these colours, though. The dull grey and dull green. Really quite an odd choice. They were it was usually a white background and just black text, but Mavis thought she'd be a bit different. Um, a history of typewriting. Imagine it's 1826. The lamp wick sputters and flickering images dance on the papers before you. Rubbing your cramped hand, you contemplate the twelfth letter of the evening. It's been three hours. The pen nib is getting worn and the ink in the inkwell is beginning to clot. You continue, because the letters must be written, but oh, what you wouldn't give for someone to do your correspondence for you. Or something. The typewriter. At the beginning of the... this, that man invented a typewriter, an inveterate tinkerer. He was fed up of cramped hands and ink-stained pages. 
which like the, the education system wasn't fed up fed up of that when I was a child. We still had to type write with pens all the time, and I got ink stained fingers from my left handedness all through my school years. When you write with your left hand, you're writing from left to right, and so you write. You're holding your hand down on the text that you've just written, and it gets covered with ink, and your fingers just get smudged with ink. Ask any left-handed child from my era. I don't think they have to write stuff down now, don't they? They just use computers. So William Austin Burt finally got his dream come true. All the kids are using computers now from just the start. We didn't have any. We had two computers in the entire school, in my primary school. And you e almost never, ever got to use those. But Mr. What's-His-Face wrote letters. Sir, there is a s this is a specimen. Sir, this is a specimen of the printing done by me on Mr. Burt's typographer. Typographer. You will observe some inaccuracies in the situation of the letters. These are owing to the imperfections of the machine, it having been made in the woods of Michigan, where no proper tools could be co obtained by the inventor. I am satisfied that the rough machine, the typographer, with which I am now printing, will be ranked with the most novel, useful, and pleasing inventions of the age. Well, you certainly don't talk yourself down, do you, Mr. Burt? Oh, it wasn't even Mr. Burt that said that, it was, uh, it was Sheldon. S Sheldon. Andrew, oh, he wrote this to Andrew Jackson, the president. Okay, I think I'm not going to read the rest of this. Let's 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 look at each page. The typewriter. Well, yeah, what's that? Hum that didn't stop the Hunt and Peck style from being the brunt of several jokes. The Hunt and Peck, the Hunt and Peck technique was the way that people typed. What the f is that? Just look for the keys and find them. Where's, let me see if I can find it. So somebody wrote an instruction manual. If somebody wrote an enclosed instruction book for typewriters, but barely anybody bothered to read it, and nobody wanted a nobody wanted a fixed standard way of typing. So, yeah, I think what they mean by hunt and peck is everybody just they just just put the little fingers over the keyboard and just looked around and thought to themselves, where's the letter? Where's the where's Q? Where's the letter W? And just pressed it, which is pretty much what everybody really does now. Unless you got forced to learn these touch typing things in school. I think most people just do something like that. And it seems to work. As far as I've seen, people that didn't get formal typing training, they're able to type respectably fast. It doesn't appear to be like we really need these, the home row stuff and all that. Biblical Seek and ye shall find. Everyone was joking about this. The two-finger method remained unchallenged for decades. Yeah, da, da. I mean, of course, this is trying. This article is trying to take the side of of the the formal methods for typing because that's what this entire CD is for. But I, again, I think that a lot of people in this day and age now, with so many people typing, they just don't bother, and they get by. Mark Twain had something to say about this. I don't think he was embarrassed about having a typewriter. Must have been considered really common or something. Typewriters, the business of typewriters, and finally we get to keyboards, portable typewriters and electric typewriters, and there we go. Well, that was that then. That was the typewriting history. Type a key in your keyboard and your guide hands will show you where they are. I'm going to send Mavis on a wild goose chase, wild key chase, a, a hunt and peck chase. What's my progress? Well, how good am I according to Mavis Beacon? I was hoping to see a big juicy A plus symbol or something to make me feel really proud of myself, but Mavis doesn't provide such a thing. That's it. That's... That's everything I'm willing to see here. Don't forget to take a break. Don't forget, don't forget to take a break, Mavis. Well, she's right. Let's take a break. Let's end all this. If you remember to review, correct, give your muscles a chance to relax. Take a short break after type. Shut up, Mavis. We're done. Are Bye. Huh? What's this? <laughs> but still, we're not done. The game won't let me leave. Oh, it's the credits. 
I don't care. Let's not forget our favourite typist, Sarah Ferguson. Good night, folks.